Good afternoon, everybody, and this is The Take Up. Today we have episode 27, Selling Embroidery Online. Sorry for that little technical glitch there where you got to see ahead of time some stuff I'm going to show you shortly, talking about stuff we did last week a little bit, be a little show and tell, some cleanup and news kind of stuff at the lead end of the show. But after that, we're going to go ahead and get right into uh, sales, e-commerce, like everybody says, this is a fairly timely topic. This is something that everybody is doing. People are going online and whether you are someone who is a custom decorator, whether you're trying to have your own clothing line or you're trying to make your own apparel, accessories, patches, whatever that may be, or you're someone who is selling, say, digital stuff, you are selling stock designs, you're selling some sort of graphical uh otherwise useful templates, something into the industry. No matter who you are, there are things we have to think about when we're talking about e-commerce, both in how we handle e-commerce, how we advertise things, how we describe things, and kind of where our audience is. So we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff all over the spectrum because truthfully, I have been taking tons of questions from people this week. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know, this has been an incredibly busy week for me. If I look a little bit draggled, that's because I am running on coffee and not much sleep. And yeah, the coffee cup is right here. The old school Terrier guys, Reggie award winner coffee cup, uh, never far from me. And I'll certainly be getting into it today. So yeah, not much sleep, lots of work going on and lots of experience to tell you guys about selling online, believe me. But with that, let's go ahead and say hello and talk to a few people who are out here in the comments. And I'll just go ahead and call people out. Uh, Cheryl, glad you could join us and that you commented earlier on this. Great topic with how uh, most sales are going online recently. Well, with the current situation we're in, uh, the truth of the matter is we're going to be seeing a lot more online sales. And these are just things that we need to think about. So if I can give you any sort of insights today that are going to help with how you select images, how you talk about copy, how you deal with uh, people's company stores, or how you deal with different kinds of stores. I'm hopefully going to be able to give you something good. If I can give you anything for that, then that will be worthwhile today. And I'm very happy to be here to help you with that because I've run at quite a few company stores and online, uh, honestly, other kinds of online presentations, other kinds of online setups that overall have a lot in common with uh, e-commerce stores as well. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things today. It's gonna go a little all over the board. Uh, if I'm a little scattered, I will certainly apologize, but it is a topic for, about which I am fairly, uh, honestly, passionate because I think there is a lot to it. Now let's go ahead and say hi to a few more people as we get started. Uh, Cindy King joining us from Texas. Good afternoon, looking forward to the class. I always thought of this as a show, not a class, but I am honored that you feel like there is enough content here to be a class, Cindy. So thank you for being here. Uh, Margaret says, uh, Timely discussion? Yeah, I think it is, honestly. And that's why we're doing it today. Uh, honestly, this last week has been full of people asking me questions about e-commerce. Christine says, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Christine. Happy to see you here, certainly. Uh, we definitely need to talk about some more uh, education ourselves. Uh, Jeff says, Jeff of Emner, Jeff Fuller, um, excited to be here. One thing I have not done yet is sell online. You know, I think everybody's going to have to get there at some point. Uh, it's not that you have to sell online. It's not that it's the only way to do things, but it is a good way to do things. It is a profitable way to do things and it can help in servicing your clients, especially now the ability to remove uh, that extra step of communication to make things more frictionless is great. Now, honestly, there is a danger of making yourself less human. If you just become a machine, you don't wanna do that. You still wanna humanize things. You still wanna have natural language when you're writing about things and you still want to have a personal touch, but if we can remove friction and make the process of purchasing from us easier, there's really nothing bad about that. Uh, Nancy Flynn, this is a great topic. Thanks for being out here, Nancy. Uh, Donna coming in from Atlanta, Donna Scott Johnson. Uh, hey y'all, she says, and great to be here. Great to have you here, Donna. Happy to have you on board for the show today. Uh, Frank from all the way out in the UK, Frank Dunn. Hi, Eric. Hi, Frank, happy to see you here. Tom Farr of Buzzards Bay Embroidery. Uh, hello, hello, Tom, happy to have you in. Connie says, hello, everyone. <laughs> Olga says, hello, I finally made it in time. Happy to have you here in time and live, Olga. So feel free to comment. So everybody, seriously, get in, comment. I want you guys to mix it up in the comments and do questions and get into the topics today because I think we have a lot we can talk about. If we go into bonus time, we do. If we could pull up short, we do. But honestly, this is something where we can really go any direction. It makes the most sense for you guys because I think this is definitely not one show and done. This is something we're going to revisit over and over and over and probably highlight some of these topics and get a little deeper. It's just how it's going to end up being there. So anyway, yeah, Jess says, I live on energy drinks. Really, I will probably have to stop and drink coffee in the middle of this. I have had a rough couple of days, folks. 
Uh, Connie says, I can't wait to see this. I have two commercial machines and they have not been moving much. Yeah, absolutely. If you are currently down, no better time to develop your business, to think about your audience, to think about how you could serve them and where you could be and what you could do differently. There's a lot of stuff to go on there. Uh, Pam says, Pam Skidmore, happy to have you here. Uh, online orders are booming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having a lot of people going on with that right now where it's going to online orders because honestly, we, we can't be doing the regular brick and mortar we used to do. So it's great. Uh, great having Tom Lee website is in development right now. Awesome time to be in development. I mean, great if you could have done it earlier. It's like we always say we would love to have prepared or known this was coming, but there's no time like the present. And uh, like a good friend of mine said, uh, you can start over any time you like. Thinking that you have to wait for the right date, wait for the right time, or be upset that you're already late. Well, starting now is the best time you can start if you're already there. Uh, Darlene says, look forward to learning online sales. Happy to have you here, Darlene. Uh, Jane, how are you from Houston? Jane Swansea, one of my favorites. Always love to see you here. Uh, John, I am high from uh, Colorado. Looking for another great talk. Happy to have you there. Uh, Frank never sleeps. Yeah, me either, man. <laughs> Carol, me, me, me. All right. You also on the coffee? Everybody seems to be having a really tired time anyway. Justin coming in late, but hey, Justin, I'm still saying hi to folks. So glad to have you in here. Justin Armenta, Digitizer, and doing some great education over at MNerd. Uh, glad, to see, glad to see that. Pam says, best selling platform. We will talk about that in a minute because that actually is a pretty, um, that's a loaded question. What's the best platform for selling? And I'll talk about that shortly. But we're probably not going to answer your question the way you like. It's like I always tell people, I'm going to give you some tools and a rubric to judge where you want to be, but you're going to have to make that last leap yourself because every time somebody does this, I mean, don't get me wrong, the SEO experts, those search engine optimizers are definitely targeting the term, what's the best online sales platform? They're trying to get you. The truth of the matter is there's not one best selling platform for everybody and that uh, your context and what you're trying to sell makes a big difference to how you handle it. Cindy says, uh, we're not an online type of company. We are so custom, very hard to try to be online. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the difference between uh, custom and pre-decorated goods is a big deal. So it's certainly something to think about. Yeah, doing samples. Yes, sampling. We're going to talk about that too. How you want to present your work is important. So if you are currently down, it is time to make stuff, do samples, and work that you can show. Uh, Pat says, I've been putting it on for 10 years. Put it off no longer. It's time to start over today. Don't beat yourself up about it, get started. Uh, Sharon's in says, hi from Ohio. Hi, Sharon, happy to have you here. Hi from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, Carol says, I just don't get Shopify. You know what? You could put any platform name in that sentence and somebody would feel the same way. <laughs> so anyway, let's say this. Before we get started, the brief watchword here is that there is no one answer for everyone. However, if we think about the way we want to present ourselves, the kind of business we have, and we think a little bit about how we put things together for the people we are aiming to please. Because remember, we have to have an audience. If you say your audience is everybody, you don't have an audience. You can't target everybody. You won't hit them. Right. So it's better if we target in a smaller kind of way, in a finer, more resolved way. But we'll talk about that later. And anyway, I want to start out with some closing up some business from last week because last week we talked about uh, multimedia and I want to bring in some stuff from that. We have some show and tell. You know, I always say to people, hey, guys, come in, show your work, show me what you're doing. Explain to me something that you did in multimedia. And uh, one of my favorite decorators who I've been talking to a bunch lately, Jeremy Picker of Amber Creative up in Colorado. What I'm going to say is uh, there may be some projects he and I get into later because I think we need to do an episode. Jeremy and I have some uh, something in common here. But I wanted to play for you a little preview of something that he put out in his social media feeds, I believe this is on Instagram, to show people that his company did multimedia. And this is his logo. This A, the A in Lightning Bolt device is part of his logo for Amber Creative, uh, the company that he uh, owns out in Colorado. But check this out. I'm gonna play this video for you live. And as you can see, check out all the different treatments for that same logo. Come on, folks. This is why I talk about multimedia and value. And this is something where he did some of this manually. It's not all the same. There's some inset materials. There was some laser etch. I mean, if I go back through here, we could stop this and, and call them all out. And I'm not going to do that necessarily. But you can see it's like, what do we have here? We have standard, thick thread, stem stitch, faux chenille, uh, felt patches, zigzag, distressed applique. Uh, we have some diff different insert materials that have textures. We've got leather, laser edge. And all very simply done, this is not high production value. This is not something that's done with you know expensive cameras. This is probably shot on camera phones and put up. However, look at the kind of 
a wide spectrum he's shown you he is capable of, that his company is capable of. And this is a great kind of show versus tell thing. Don't say, I'm a company that can do multimedia. Plop this 15 seconds of video in front of someone and they'll know. It's one thing we're gonna talk about with e-commerce. I don't wanna say this, and I'll go ahead and jump into this before we even go too far. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring up a, something I'm always telling people is that sometimes you gotta prime the pump, right? What do I mean by this? Uh, let's say it the mean way and then we'll say it the nice way. The mean way is that uh, in my experience over all my years of custom decoration, about 85% of my clientele has no imagination or they feel like they want something and have no way to tell me. The nice way to say that is that we need to prime the pump. People don't necessarily know what they want until they see it. And if they're going to kind of internalize something, especially when we're talking about any sort of processes, or if you're trying to sell the value, let's say we have all this cool stuff that Jeremy's showing us, and we have to sell someone on the value of why it's worth extra expense to do a thick thread treatment of their logo or why we would want to do something that looks different from the standard, you're going to have to explain it and you're definitely going to have to show it. So what I always say is uh, show your work. And what I also mean by that is to show the work you want to do. There's multiple reasons why I use the term show your work. Uh, show your work can mean a lot of things. When we're talking about marketing and talking about showing process because people really do love to see machines running, love to see digitizing, love to see what it looks like to go from the idea to the end result. That's great for marketing. But in this case, when we're talking about e-commerce and we're talking about stock designs and stuff that's digital later, we'll discuss that down the road. Um, showing your work means actually showing something, as I always say, uh, in the thread, right? Like it's like in the flesh, in the thread. If you're showing your work, you're actually showing something on a sample in the thread in the way that it's going to be used in actuality so it's honest. So you know, show your work and prime the pump. Show people the kind of stuff that you can do, what you want to do for them and explain the value to them to some degree. Now it's not that you're gonna be selling them hard on this stuff or that you're gonna be explaining things constantly, but a little bit of education and especially a little bit of example work goes a long way. And even when we're talking about e-commerce, we're talking about offering products, thinking about how we present these products and making sure we show decorated items in real situations can help our customers when their imagination is maybe not so uh, hot, right? <laughs> we need to prime the pump. Let's help them get their imaginations together, right? So that's that's part of last week's multimedia and part of this week too. So everything is a spectrum. I always tell people that I have a holistic view of things. I think that when we're talking about decoration, it has to be holistic. You can't talk about embroidery without thinking about the garment, the fabric, the stabilizer materials, the needles, the digitizing, and the operation. And you definitely can't talk about decoration as a business without then also talking about sales, e-commerce, writing copy, marketing, all of the things that go into making sure that we have attention from people and that when we have their attention, that we get the message to them that we need to get to them and that it lands where it's supposed to and that it gets to the people who are supposed to see it. And then once we get them in-house, we have to deal with all the quality and the value and how we handle ourselves in process. All of this is a continuum, it's all important. We can always say which thing is more important. Well, there's a lot that goes into it, but a little bit of attention all around and to take that holistic view and back off and say, yeah, it's great to drill down and to look at one individual item, one thing that we wanna action on, but really we also have to back off and take a higher view of everything, take that 10,000 foot view where you look down over everything and say, okay, what does the whole shape of this thing look like and how are all these little bits connected? Suffice it to say, show your work, prime the pump and really great work from Jeremy. I also have one more little uh, show your work kind of thing I wanna bring up. And this is from uh, Cisco Cho who was in the, uh, in the chat last week. We'll go ahead and bring this up larger. And he just had some multimedia stuff that he did as well and wanted to show everybody. And I thought it was cool to show. These are printed patches where the, uh, the camo on the background of this is printed. However, these are made into appliques and the text is sewn on. Another great way of using multimedia because this is something where the pattern doesn't have to hit exactly right. You could use an all over pattern like this and it just is a great inset. Uh, I've also used, honestly, multimedia for doing things where I was just under the gun time-wise. I've done colored patches where I didn't have the right color material. I just subbed the entire color over it. Makes them more expensive, surely, but for doing the kind of work that I was doing, knowing my audience, I was doing stuff for uh, costuming for the movies. Being able to do it today was more important than being able to do it cheap.
you have to know your audience. So think about that and how you present stuff, but cool stuff from Cisco. You also had another, another piece and there's a good explanation for something we're gonna talk about here too. This is a print that has an embroidered little donut on there. You see that donut kill our vibes. And this was a cool little shirt. And the great thing, he's got this all over pick of it. Certainly not something I'd throw up on e-commerce necessarily. Totally fine for something like uh, Instagram and showing it to everybody. But what I love is that we have this pick, the big all over pick, and then we have what I'm gonna call a detail picture. So you can check up on that little tiny uh, embroidered donut that has sprinkles. And honestly, very well done. I'm seeing great res uh, great registration on all of those outlines. So good work coming out of Cisco shop. And I just thought I'd show that stuff to you. Once again, just great stuff in multimedia. Something else to talk about later, we're gonna discuss kind of the three pictures I like to take of any embroidered piece. And we kind of have this for a garment. One of the great things to have is an all over decoration and then a detail or a texture picture. And we'll talk about that again later. One of the great things about embroidery is that it has texture. So getting a close up picture that has some nice lighting, especially from an off angle, so we can highlight some shadows and some highlights on the structure of the embroidery on the three dimensional kind of elements that are in embroidery. Uh, it's a great way to get some more interest and to show people kind of the value of an embroidered piece. So let's go ahead and pull that down for a minute. But I thought that was cool. Just wanted to show you that cool stuff from Jeremy and that cool stuff from Cisco. So really cool stuff. And uh, let's see, we've got a couple more comments I'm gonna bring in before we get into the meat of the matter and start getting back into the e-commerce topics. But uh, yeah, here's some comments they're going on out there. Donna Scott Johnson says, uh, Cindy, I hear you. Mine's certainly been word of mouth and now it's just really for starting the process. You know what? It's totally fine for your website not to be the main generator for your, for your company. The other reason I've used websites in e-commerce quite frequently is just to make the ordering process easier, especially when we're talking about a captive audience. If we're talking about a corporate audience that's doing uniforming, a lot of the stuff I used to do, especially right now, if I were still doing the stuff I was doing before, I would be very busy because I was doing hospitals and medical. And for the hospitals and medical market, I actually had a site that worked, looked, operated just like a retail store, right? Just like a retail store, it was meant to sell directly to single consumers. However, the entire thing, the, the people who were working at the hospitals could buy things with their own money, but they were all given vouchers that we were handling. So I have an entire e-commerce site and it was written and worked on in a very retail style. It was in the way that people would be comfortable shopping from, but the real use of this site wasn't because I'm trying to entice people to buy one garment over another. And in fact, uh, the way I organized the site, despite the fact that it worked like a resale site was by department according to the regulations that the uh, hospitals had in place for color and garment style. So what I've done, I took that metaphor and made a company store that just made ordering easier. It's okay that it wasn't a lead generator. I had people who were captive and uh, frankly, that's the deal. You didn't have to have it be the initial generator. The people were going to come to that site no matter what, but it was still important for them to have accurate descriptions, to have images that they could understand, to have sizing and other th information that they need close at hand. So it still needed to have that same kind of experience of a retail store, but it wasn't the lead generator. It was just a convenient tool. However, it still became a selling point because I got the work from those hospitals because I could provide an experience, uh, number one, that allowed us to ship directly to the individual customers. It was actually a fulfillment thing. So once again, we talk about it holistically, well, the e-commerce is a portion of it, but part of the e-commerce was having a tool that would generate individual orders that I could then package and ship and do the fulfillment direct to the individual employees. Number one, handling all of the orders, handling all of the technical stuff and doing the setup so that the website naturally funneled people into the garments they were allowed to wear. That was another thing, ease of use. Uh, and for the third thing is when the employees wanted to go beyond what they were given in their employee vouchers, we could take individual payments and treat this more like a retail site. And what I'm gonna tell you is the prices were more akin to retail prices than they were wholesale prices. So you have to think about the model of the store you're working on, right? Think about the model of the store you're working on, thinking about what it is useful for, but there's no one answer. That's why when someone says, hey, is Shopify the best option? It might not be, and especially not if you're doing fully custom work. If you're doing fully custom work, uh, the ability to upload art and see things and possibly have an online designer, we can talk a little bit about that, uh, is gonna be way more important than someone that has pre-decorated goods or a line, if you wanna call it that. So 
really it is just interesting to think about what your website is for, but there are still some things we can talk about that are more universal. I just think it's part of what I want to do today is have you start thinking about who's looking at my website, what is the value to them of looking at the website, and what kind of information am I providing to them to help them make decisions and to tip them over into sales if I am using it to generate that desire in them to actually tip over and buy things. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump on a couple more comments here. Uh, yeah, manpower is an issue too. You gotta work and watch a website. Well, you know, you don't necessarily have to watch it moment by moment. What I will say though, is you can't put it up and then forget it. You can't not answer things for a day. And honestly, a day is getting a, lot, a little bit long. What I will tell you from working with larger e-commerce firms from being uh, a fulfillment by Amazon, person. I have have and do work with Amazon. So I kind of have a lot of insight onto working on a larger scale with uh, moving quite a few units. They are very much expecting a 24, tur 24 hour turnaround on any communication. And really the faster you can do that turnaround on communication, the better for your ratings. You need to have a sub 24 hour turnaround. And I would say really you need to be lower than that. So yes, manpower can be an issue. I will say there is some level of being able to set things things up and have an overnight salesperson, as, as people all used to say about websites. At the same time, you do need to manage all channels of communication and get back to people. Being responsive, that's one of the key things. I did a bonus show with the two really guys about e-commerce. And one of the biggest failures you can get into is not being responsive on your e-commerce. You absolutely must answer questions. You must answer questions. You must answer any sort of help or request, and you need to do it within 24 hours. If you can't commit to that, then don't have those contact methods available. And especially, we talk about social media. Don't have a way to get in contact via social media if you're never going to check that channel. It's a bad look. So try not to do that. And I'm going to say, I'll be honest with you, very recently in uh, my own work, I found that I had a failure in that position. I actually had some technology that had failed me and I didn't know. And because I wasn't diligent about it, some uh, messages got lost for quite a long time. And if you're one of those people who I lost a message from, I'm going to try and get back to you. But I'll tell you, it does happen. You do fail these things, but you do need to keep check on it. And, and part of the deal with this is to stay focused. Don't spread yourself too thin and make sure that you are going to watch those channels and monitor your technologies you put in place. Because everybody talks about how much great automation there is out there right now. Sure, but if you don't monitor those technologies and make sure that they are kept up to date, backed up and functioning, it doesn't matter that you have great automation or the ability to answer different things or have a CRM, like a consumer resource management system that has all the different information in it. If one of the pipes is broken that gets your information from place to place, that can cause problems. So really, you do need to watch that. And if there's a way to suck that all into one place, that's great. Make sure all your connectors are working. That's what happened to me. So anyway, something to, something to do there. And I will say, totally fine also, fully fine for your website to be an informational site that doesn't have live ordering that is for someone to contact you. Especially when we're talking about custom decorating, art resources, custom digitizing, uh, that kind of stuff really is not something you're necessarily going to do online functionally or have somebody order online, especially if we're not talking about like commodity garment stuff like that. So totally fine. And I see that in the comments here too. Uh, Donna says hers is really a place for other workrooms to look at it, check it all out and start the inquiry of a custom design for soft furnishings. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's okay if you want to do both. There are ways to do both. I've certainly done this because uh, I used to run the company sites like I talked about before. Those company sites generally tend to be what I like to call a preprint site. Preprint being that the... Uh, Decorations are already set in stone. I know what decorations are going on, what garments. There may be some selections like color selections, size selections, of course, and there might be some combinations, but these are things that are already products. The products are made, the decorations are set in stone. I'm not altering those decorations. I have preset values that I will allow things to be changed. Maybe I will allow, there's also a level of customization between full custom work and um, completely set in stone work, what we often did was personalization, whereas you could use an online designer, but lock it down only to adding names or division titles or something like that text that is uh, keyboardable embroidery text that you can throw underneath something or on something in a template. That's one way you can do it too. You can have both worlds to some degree, but I would say you really do need to focus on whatever site that there is. You have to be very clear about how much customization is there and you have to know what you're trying to get out of the site. I don't love having it all together in one place. 
I think that if you have a, a custom line, custom lines live in a place and they belong in a website that is branded, that is about the custom line, that makes sense for the custom line, where the branding of the website, the copy all goes into the kind of designs, the kind of clientele who would want your clothing line. Whereas the custom work needs to be a little more general. And if you're gonna have online design or something like that, where you're going to do fully custom work online, you're going to need different tools because you may need either uh, at least art uploading and probably some sort of previewing. And you're possibly going to want some sort of online design if you're doing individual personalized stuff or stuff where you're going to have templating. Like I said, you can drop names or something into existing templates and sock designs. That can be done in that kind of space. Whereas I don't necessarily see like, and I would definitely not have people fully uploading their own artwork right next to a place where I'm doing a, a line. It's not that you can't do it, but I think that even when you do that, you wanna segment your site out and have some branding and some messaging around that line that makes sense for the people that it's targeted toward. So that's one of those things to think about. Uh, but I will go ahead and go through a couple other comments. Uh, Ramona also has kind of what, the other thing I like to call these brochure sites, the sites that are informational and have contact information, but don't have any sort of live ordering or necessarily, when I talk about e-commerce, we're talking about doing commerce online, we really are talking about sales online, but it's totally fine for a website to not be an e-commerce site. Ramona says uh, her website is informational, place you can send interested persons to see samples, the fee schedule, hints and tips, with an instruction email for an order request. Totally fine, that works. I would say for my money, I'd have a form so they could fill it out online and hit the form. That's always nice, uh, but other than that, yeah, emailing for requests, totally fine to have an informational site like that. And uh, that's just something you can do. Jeff says, that sounds so much better than my Excel sheet. I email some of my customers. You know what? The Excel sheet could totally be turned into something online if you wanted to, even if it was locked down by a password. I think having an, an informational website is at least something to do. Uh, and Justin is absolutely correct here. It's harder than ever these days. Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger email, website order forms, et cetera, et cetera. Best thing you can do for that is probably set up some automation to get everything into one place for you to look at it or one set of notifications. But the truth of the matter is when you have a bunch of channels like that, it just becomes a matter of habits, uh, blocking out time for you to answer these things and also making sure that you're not spending your time in channels that don't respond. If you have, whatever it is that you're doing, let's just say that you, are on Instagram and you find there's just nobody on Instagram for your clientele. Totally not true for us. Instagram is a very visual medium. Uh, it absolutely is a place where decorators do very well. And I've actually seen, like I said, a lot of streetwear brands and custom decorators doing really great on Instagram. But if you weren't getting any traction there, keeping everything there where you have to get become, you know, dealing with commenters, dealing with something else or continuously seeing time there might not be worthwhile for you. Um, and this one's hard. Uh, Tina says, I get concerned about online portfolio of work because all the copying issues I get knocked off within days. Yeah, no, that's hard. I would say that's something that's hard to avoid. Uh, best thing you can do is get out there, be present and get out there first. Ultimately, a lot of stuff is going to get knocked off. It's going to happen to you. As a digitizer, I've had my work knocked off many times, uh, even by pretty large companies that I won't mention, uh, surprisingly did some uh, lookalike work from what I did. And I took it to be inspirational instead of a uh, knockoff. But hey, this this stuff this stuff can happen. Uh, what I will say is for my money, I don't like to view watermarks and hiding things. Um, if it's something I'm trying to sell, I just go ahead and mock it up on garments. I mock it up and sh if I'm showing digitals, but usually I'm gonna show something in the thread. And if I take the kind of photos that are action photos of a real garment, of a real sample, it's a lot harder for them to just copy the uh, thing off. If they're gonna redraw it, they're gonna redraw it as soon as they see it. It's not gonna matter if you try and protect it because they'll redraw it if it's got a watermark on it or not. And the watermark just gets in the way of the customer seeing it. But that's that's me. That is one of mine for sure, yeah. And uh, Jeff says, he knows part of what happened to me. Yeah, pixel by pixel, somebody copied one of my pieces. Yeah, this is absolutely true. But that, that does happen. But I like this from Christine here, by the way. Uh, keep in mind, even if the site is informational, it needs to have a call to action. Absolutely. Purpose of the site, even if you're not selling on the site, is to drive customers to make a purchase. If it doesn't do that, it's not working for you. Yeah, and I would say um, when we're talking about the site like Ramona has, her call to action is contact me for further information. And you have to make that call. You have to make it very clear, have to have it present. And thank you, Christine, for bringing that up. You really do want to make sure a call to action is present and people aren't looking for the next thing they need to do. We've talked about that with e-commerce before, but we're going to get a little further into selling embroidery specifically online. I would say, though, um, no matter what you're doing, you need to have a call to action. People shouldn't be guessing as to what step they should take next, what you want them to do next. Uh, absolutely have a call to action, multiple calls to action. And what I always say is don't hide these things below the fold. If you have a bunch of information, don't have all this wall of information or even samples, walls of samples. And then at the bottom, after scrolling through tons of stuff, contact me to buy things. 
absolutely not have that call to action present where they can see it, hey, preferably all the time, and if not, at least at intervals so that they can see this. By the time that they tip and they decide they want to do something with you, they shouldn't be searching to find out how. It should be very clear to anybody looking at your site, whether it's e-commerce or it is informational, what step is next and how they go about it. it. Should be very clear and visually very clear. But with that, let's get into some of the stuff that I want to talk about today about e-commerce in general. Uh, number one, I'm just going to say this again. Yes, I've had people say, should we even say commerce anymore? Is e-commerce commerce? Yes, it is. Almost all commerce is done the same way. E-commerce is very simple. The thing is, the reason why I'm going to back up and call this e-commerce is we're gonna talk about some of the actual functional things that are specific to running things off of a website. Um, like I said, with e-commerce, presentation becomes a lot more important. We need to be able to take clean, clear, well-lit photographs of our pieces. I'll just lay it out that way. Whatever we're selling, we need clean images. Now, I'm not going to say you can't use mock-ups. You can use mock-ups, but I kind of want to bring something up on that, you know, on that note. So let's go ahead and jump over to something. I'm just going to go ahead and I have a uh, search for embroidered apparel. And anybody who's been in this business long enough is going to look at this search for embroidered apparel and look at this Google shopping bar up here. The reason I'm kind of pausing for a moment is for everybody to go, yep, those are Sandmar stock images. And they are. So something to think about with presentation, folks, is that sincerely, if you use stock images, they probably won't stand out. It's not that you can't use mockups. It's not that you can't use digital mockups. But I will say that using digital mockups means it looks like a digital mockup and it's likely to get lost in a sea of items. Because even if I'm scrolling through here, um, honestly, despite the fact that this is not necessarily like not all of these images are the best images ever, the ones that aren't just layered together mockups that have some photographs look more dynamic, look they have some more texture. And I mean, some people have done some good stuff here. Uh, this particular piece, yeah, they actually have a nice uh, inset. They have a detail inset that's popping up on their most popular image. That's fine, right? But these and this, here's an action piece. There is a piece where people are actually showing this on customers as they would be used. Those are great, especially if it's a real picture and action shot from your customer. Those are fantastic. They're very lively. Admittedly, is this live shot better? I don't know. This is a pretty rough shot. I'm not trying to make somebody unhappy about their pieces they've done, but if you look at this where it's kind of crumpled up and you can't see it very well, the lighting's a little yellowy and it's just kind of up against the floorboard, not particularly the best shot, right? Might not be the best shot ever, uh, but I will say is some of these other clearer shots you know, if it's a live shot, some of those look a bit better. Now you can have any number, but think about how weird some stuff looks. These mock-ups here, probably a great company, but if you see a mock-up where they've cut the person out of it and the neck is missing, and now there's a big white block that looks like there's no neck at back of the neck of the shirt, it's a weird thing. So think about these mock-ups, totally fine to use mannequin shots, totally fine to paint somebody out if you need to. I will say, however, that even this flat shot here, I find this to be slightly more dynamic, especially if we had another shot with it uh, of the garment or a shot of the mock-up than say some of these pieces up here that I'm looking at. This Your Logo piece here, it doesn't really give me anything for my imagination. It just shows that I can put something on this shirt. And this is a shot that I'm gonna see over and over and over again in other people's work, right? So, and it's also, as you can see, it's not really warped to the shapes. It looks flat, it looks out of place. It's an obvious mock-up. It's not that it can't be effective, but it's not something that I would absolutely want to do for my shop. And I would much rather see stuff like this cool shot where we're showing actual people really on site using the garment. I'm not saying every garment's going to be like that, but I like people to think about it. You're not going to take pictures of every single thing you offer, but when you're trying to show people the kind of work you do, uh, I really like to see this. And when you have a smaller curated amount of garments, and I'm going to I'm going to pull myself back out so you can see this a little bit better while I'm talking. Um, when you have a company store or a store that you're offering, uh, especially pre-decorated stuff, you know you've got a smaller group of garments, curate those garments. Don't just throw the entire catalog at somebody and have automatic mock-ups. So really just have curation as part of your process. Just like the inspiration and priming the pump is important for them to understand what kind of graphics they might want or what kind of treatments they might want, the other thing you have to worry about is that people can see this massive chunk of all these different garments, especially when we're talking about e-commerce. People will jump in when they buy an e-commerce solution and just say, add catalog, add catalog, add catalog, and they have hundreds and hundreds of garments. 
And then it's just a paralysis by analysis. The person gets stuck looking through all the garments and getting tired of it and they don't know what they're doing. Whether you are brick and mortar or e-commerce, it's a bad look. It's a great idea to start out with a selection that you know are great garments and then open up or say, we have more garments that we can show you or, or hide them, have a featured garment section and then the ability to go to the full catalog if you wanna have them online and have people browse through. There are the kind of people who like to do that browsing, but I would say your, your top selections be a really great idea for you to, number one, curate them and have a smaller selection that you know is good and that you can really speak to their quality, speak to the way they perform and to have pictures that are live pictures that are maybe not the same as every other image out there. Uh, like I said, I, do I use mockups? Absolutely have used mockups. And it really depends on how much investment I have in a company store. If the company store is not gonna turn around a lot of profit, if we're not charging them from the store, I may just use mockups and throw it together. And especially if it's being used as a glorified order form that's maybe a seasonal order form, I'm not gonna spend all this time. But if I have my own retail style line, if I won't invest in sampling, it says a little bit about my line. If I'm trying to make something, let's say I'm making a higher scale line, I'm doing kinds of special decorations and I'm not willing to do any sampling, it just isn't a great look for the line. And I think that it makes sense to do some sampling or at the very least to have some custom images involved. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop out here. We've got a good comment in here from, first, we'll go ahead and have a funny comment. <laughs> I want to get Brad Pitt in here to put on some shirts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's busy. Yeah, you know, it can't always be Brad Pitt with the shirts, but I think uh, customers wearing shirts are great to show, even if you think of them as a testimonial. Great to have in, on board, certainly, if you can. And Cindy, yeah, this might be a multi-part show. I'm pretty sure it will be. But it's something that I want to get into because a lot of people were talking about this in the last week, what would we do with going online? And then uh, Brian says, uh, you come upon one of my pet peeves. Often there will be a thumbnail sized image on the side and it's labeled click to enlarge, but only bring the same size image up. Please put larger images linked to the thumbnails. Yeah, no, you need to have images that are visible. So let's let's talk a little bit about the kind of images we have out there and things that we're, we're discussing. Uh, so before, I will go back a little bit later and talk about the difference between say a pre-decorated item store versus a custom order store. I think we covered that a little bit as to the kind of tools you would want. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about how we're selling things and what we want to do with the images. Um, and for me, the kinds of images you want to do are these three. This is the, these are the ones that are the critical ones for me. And they can still be different styles, but this is what's critical for me. I like to have an overall image. Overall image meaning that I'm going to see the garment and the structure of the garment, whether this is, and I think it should probably be both, a flat image of the garment is great. So we can actually see the structure, see the color, see any sort of details we have, but we can actually see the entire garment. Flat image is great for that. I've seen this done with super flat, uh, pressed like a board garments, and I've seen it done with rumpled like we threw it on the floor garments. And it really depends on your audience and what feeling you're trying to get and trying to evoke. But for me, a decently flat overall picture of the, of the uh, garment, usually flat, maybe on a mannequin, something like that. Those are great images for overall. And those things, sometimes I can use a standard stock image for that because uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be what I'm going to call the hero image, the first image that they see that's the largest, most detailed, the image that's going to pull them in and get their attention. Uh, so overall image is there to show us what the garment looks like. And if it is pre-decorated or if we're suggesting a decoration, whether it's custom or pre-decorated, we can see where the decoration lands on the garment. So those things are important to me. So overall, we're going to see the whole garment where the decoration lands on the garment. The second one is the detail image. The detail image for me is going to be an image that's a little tighter, that's going to show the decoration because we're going to assume, hey, I'm assuming we're all decorators here. It's important whether we're talking about a custom line or we're talking about a co company store, we wanna see a detailed shot of the decoration. I like this to be a real sample. It could be a mock-up depending on the amount of investment you have in this property, but you want a detail shot that's a tight, blown up shot, nice high resolution of the decoration itself. So now we have an overall image. We know what the garment's gonna look like, especially if we have a pre-selected garment, we know the garment's gonna look like, we know where it's gonna land in the placement. The detail image is gonna show us what the decoration looks like on a tighter scale. I always tell people to judge stuff a little bit further away, but when we're doing stuff online, people want to have the ability to see what they're getting into. They don't want any surprises. Detail image will help them with that. And then for embroidery, it's just something I love to do as a texture image. These are tight shots off angle shots, shots that show a little light and shadow. So let me just show you kind of an example of that. And it's more, it's something that's with a patch. So the overall is not the same kind of thing, but it also plays to something else I wanna tell you guys. And I have told you guys previously is that you wanna see things in the thread 
and that you really want to show your work, right? You want to see it, show your work. You want to show people the kind of work you want to do so that they order that kind of work. And you want to see it in the thread because that is where the real, uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, they say. And in the thread, right? The way embroidery looks is in the thread, not in the digital preview. And in fact, because digital previews generally have some pull compensation and some uh, other things applied to them, they have also colors that may not be exactly right depending on your software. Um, showing things in the digital preview can actually make them look worse. Digital previews have a tendency for uh, text to, to be humped. They have uh, that camel text. Some people call that the dancing baseline. I know uh, Brian says that too, the dancing baseline, where you see the baseline on a line of text and it's up and down and up and down because of the pull and push compensation that's been added to the font. Digital previews show you that and it can be a, a problem. But let's go ahead and go over the overall detail texture thing and talk a little about digital previews. So this plays into everything from people who are selling apparel to people doing stock designs. Because I also suggest if you're a stock design seller, stitch out your stock design, sell it from the stitch out, don't sell it from the digital. I know that costs more. If you have to charge a little bit more per stock design instance, do it. I think it makes the most sense. So honestly, let's talk a little bit about that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you some pictures of a piece that I often show people. And it's just something that I think is a good example. So let's go ahead and pop this up here. And this is a, a piece that I've done many times before. And this is a uh, regulator's patches. This was done for a law enforcement motorcycle club. So take that how you will. That's what it was. So it's not just, it's not like everybody says, oh, biker gang stuff. So this one was law enforcement, but I've done some uh, biker patches for just about every segment you can imagine back in the day. But this is the stuff that we're working on this. And here's what I'm saying. Digital preview. It's okay. This one particularly is just an image digitally. And actually I had something selected, which I didn't see before I captured this. Uh, in this particular software, it has a really sharp highlight and a really dark shadow. It does show some more texture, which might be nice for you. But at the same time, you're getting an artifact line here in the fill that looks pretty weird. You're getting some colors. This variation in color is not natural and won't actually happen in the thread. So showing someone this digital preview, this looks cheap, guys. And I don't want to say it like that, but it does. It doesn't look high quality. It looks cheap. It looks poor. It does not look like the wonderful thing that it really could be if it were done in the thread. So here we are. We're looking at this piece. Does this sell it? Maybe. Because this might be a content driven, right? If somebody is content driven, if they like the image enough, they may buy the thing because they really want this patch. They identify, right? One of the, one of the things we sell to people is, of course, identification. If they identify with the group, this can drive them whether or not the images are great, whether or not the copy we write about something is great. It can drive them because it's identification. People really want to identify with a group and they may go that. Or it's purpose motivated. If for some reason the image has purpose or is related to a cause that someone is in, thinks is important or a group that they identify with, they may buy it anyway. But you don't want to skate on that. You still want to provide them with something good. So what are we talking about, right? Overall detail texture. I think this doesn't fill in any of these. Yes, it's an overall shot. No, it's not a good overall shot. It doesn't show the actual quality of the piece. So let's get out of there. But let's say we have this. Now, this is a more kind of, you know, it's a little slapdash. It was meant to be a little skewed. And this is not an ideal shot. I look at this shot and the backgrounds aren't great. It's not a perfect shot. It's maybe not the way I would do it these days comparatively. But uh, <laughs> let me not leave comments on my own graphic here. But if we zoom around in this thing, we can kind of see like, hey, you know, it's got all the pieces involved. You can actually see the embroidery. You can see all the patches. And because these were patches, I did decide to move them around so that people understood that these were separate patches. Uh, part of the reason I did that was I was communicating something, right? I'm communicating to my customer. These are separate patches. You can see that they're stacked together. There's a shadow here. These are all in different places. So when you see them, absolutely, these are separate patches that if you, if you were to buy this piece, you're getting these four separate patches in the patch set. And you can see that. So when I'm showing somebody a preview of something, and this could be the same for approvals, I'm showing them all of the pieces there. I'm showing them uh, in the thread. As you can see, the difference is striking between how this looks, this piece here, colors, how that looks, how uh, also the black has no shine to it, which it does in the actual piece, and this. Very different animal, not the same look, not accurate. And if somebody got this and they were looking at colors from this, they might be a little upset. I tried to tune it when I was making this, but there is a lot of uh, lighter shading. The shading that we ended up doing was much more subtle in the banners on this than it was in the digital preview, right? Not great, not something you wanna see. And part of that is from the shine of the thread. Now I will say for an overall view, this was a tight stack that I did just to uh, use it as a background because I actually zoomed on this and used this as a background for something that I was working on with them. And when you're doing that, 
uh, that's a different matter because then it's it's artistic. It's supposed to look like this. I'm not seeing everything, but it's not a good overall shot because we're obscuring parts of the other patches. But then that would be right. So this is what I would call then an overall shot. And this is an overall shot and it could be used as a detail shot as well. Uh, this is something where we're actually seeing the full detail of the decoration because these are patches the decoration is the item there's not a lot to show there and then the last kind of shot we'll discuss in this particular uh, set of shots is this this is what i'm going to call our texture shot in this shot i have an off angle i'm shooting off an angle my lighting is coming from another side i moved my lighting around the angle of my camera so that i could see some shine off of the garment off of the material and i'm seeing the texture of the stitching and I think when it is placed as a further detailed image on top of having it, the overall image on top of having the detail image, this kind of image adds to the quality and says, look, this is really embroidered. You can see the stitching. It looks cool. It has some texture to it. And you get an idea of this thing that it, it, when we are dealing with digital representations, we can't touch, we can't feel, we're not in a store, we can't flex it, touch it, feel the texture, feel what the thread is like. This is as close as we can get. Texture shot like this will help. Aside from something that's coming out now, which is to have video. And more and more people are actually putting video on their sites. That is the next level. This is really for retail. And I'll show you briefly something from a retail site to give you an idea about that. But in the absence of that, a texture shot like this, if you're doing the kind of decorations where that decoration is being sold, this is a line. This is something that they're going to sell over and over with that decoration, not custom work. This is an awesome way to do your shots. When you're dealing with custom work where you won't be able to do this stuff, it's why you would want to have a gallery of your work or something of that nature. Having a gallery of your actual work in the thread with these three types of shots involved, with the overall shots, with the detail shots, and with the texture shots, will help somebody to see your work and trust your work in the e-commerce space, even if they're doing a design and all they're ever going to get is a digital mock-up because they're doing online design or uploading a logo of their own. So I think those are important kinds of shots. I think it's something to think about for sure. So I would uh, <laughs> I would say that is how really you have to think about it. And sorry, I, I giggled there for a minute because I'm looking at the comments here and I have to say, yeah, uh, behind the scenes, Brian says, Brian, uh, of course, you know, I am in the Brilliant Studios and Brian is the CEO and creator of Brilliance. Uh, Eric and I have lost a lot of sleep recently on website features. I'm running on adrenaline coffee. It's Stanley's driven by love of what I'm doing. And he says, yet to me, way better. That is a uh, high, high praise from somebody I uh, trust very much. So thank you very much for that, Brian. Yeah, if I'm yammering on and running fast, uh, you can thank caffeine and a couple of hours of sleep for keeping me in, in that kind of state. But I will say this. I want to bring another comment or two from Brian here. Uh, this is the same as when you walk into a store. You spot something that attracts your interest. You get arms linked through it and look closer. And you bring a specific area right up to your nose and take a closer look. People shop this way. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. We're trying to replicate that sense of feeling a garment, having it in your hand, because we're trying to get the same kind of attention grabbing. And then we're trying to show the reality of what the thing is and then get their trust and get them excited about the way the thing feels. Uh, the way people often say this when we're talking about sales is something that I don't love this way that they, they term it, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Talk about selling the sizzle, not the steak. I don't love selling the sizzle, not the steak. What they mean is instead of talking about the steak, you wanna sell the experience of the thing you're selling, that's selling the sizzle, not the steak. I would say um, for me, I don't like to call it selling the sizzle, uh, not the steak. I don't like that because it's not just the experience of the thing, I call it this. These are the three things that we're looking for when we're trying to sell this stuff. We want it to be inspirational, right? These are the three ways we can attack it, or and it, among many. If something is inspirational, it gets somebody excited to make something of their own, especially for the custom world, or it inspires them to put something together to do something they haven't done before. It's inspirational because they're looking at something. The object itself inspires them. It makes them feel something. You can say that's kind of like selling the sizzle, but I'm looking at the piece and the piece itself is inspirational or something about it is inspirational. It makes me want to do something different. It is inspiring me in some fashion. It's attacking me creatively. It's making me think I want to look like this. I want this garment. I have something I want to give this to. There's aspirational, and this is where we talk about action shots, action shots that are of people. Uh, and I'm going to bring in a retail store site here and talk a little about this shortly. Aspirational shots are where you look at what's going on either in the scene or the person, honestly, wearing the garment and say, I want to be like them. 
that's the kind of person I want to be. I want to look like that. Or I'm seeing this scene of people having fun. I'm seeing people on the beach. Or I'm seeing people doing something I want to do, and they seem to trust this garment. And it just makes me think, yeah, I could do that too. I want to be in that scene. It's aspirational. I want to reach to that level. I want to be that person. I aspire to be doing what they're doing or seeing what they're seeing or having that uh, experience. Or it's functional. And the shot can be functional. We can show that a garment is ready for the function it should be used for. That's why they have these context shots. You'll see invariably somebody will take a Carhartt jacket or a heavy work jacket is one of the ones they always see. And they'll show it sitting on a big pile of rebar with sparks behind it from a grinder against a big concrete wall with a hard hat next to it that's not part of the sale. Uh, we're trying to show the function. It's tough. Or we see this being worn by people actually doing the thing we want to do. So you'll see uh, like a welder wearing a fire, uh, a fire resistant decorated piece. And you see the welder wearing it, holding the welding gear or welding something. Now we, we trust the function differently if we see the image that shows us what it can do. So that's the thing, inspirational, aspirational, and functional. And then the other things I talked about earlier, you can also have things that are just purpose motivated. If the thing you're doing, whether it's a political or a charity or a religious or a community or a social, whatever it is, if there is a purpose behind the thing that we're looking at, behind the garment, behind the decoration, then that might motivate us as well. And showing that image and likely putting that in context or putting it on a person where they fit into that context will help us understand that as well. But that purpose motivation can also get people. It's something that you should look for. I still think those types of uh, images are important for that, but you should think about that as one of the ways that people make those decisions online. We want to attach to that or identification. And that's just, it's, it's kind of mixed in with the rest, but when it is part of a group that you identify with, that you want to be identified with, that's part of it. It's really, I would say that it goes with being aspirational, but aspirational stuff can also just be about literally looking at a scene or a person and thinking, I want to be in that position. Or, and that's the thing about that inspirational and aspirational, part of that inspiration or the aspirational sense can also be the experience that you're going to provide when you buy the garment, the object for someone else. That's, that's one that I've seen a lot. If you've ever seen somebody advertise family reunion shirts, now I know it's a rough time right now. We can't do that stuff. I can imagine people now saying we can't have a family reunion. Let's all have Zoom calls. We're going to do a big Zoom call and bring as many people in. And we're going to make t-shirts for it and send them to everybody direct fulfillment and take pictures of ourselves. We'll take a big screenshot of everybody in Zoom wearing our family reunion t-shirts. And we all have a piece of something that puts us together. Sounds nice, right? Inspirational, aspirational. It's both things. I'm aspiring, I'm in, inspired by that feeling and I'm aspiring to bring that feeling to my family. So inspirational, aspirational, functional, think about that with the way people are motivated, certainly purpose motivated and identification. A lot of what we do, if we want somebody to see something, we want, we want them to identify what we're looking at, what they're looking at as part of who we are and that we are part of the thing we are ident identifying with, right? And like I said, one of the best ways you can handle that, show what you're doing, especially for embroidery in the thread, overall shot, detail shot, texture shot, and out. Those are the best ways to handle that. Now, I, what I want to do is bring a couple more examples up. We're getting toward the end of the show. And rather than to haul us into bonus time, I think individual segments of this show could really go on to be some deep dives. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments what parts of this you'd like to see more of, or if you want me to do maybe a fully e-commerce. I mean, I like to really work on embroidery and digitizing here However, if you want to get deep on e-commerce uh, platforms at some point, we can talk more about that. It's always going to have an embroidery flavor to it, but we can talk more about that. Or if any of these subjects are really interesting to you, let's talk about that later. Well, let's, let's see what's going on. So in the comments, tell me what you think. So I've seen some of this generic stuff before, uh, and I'll actually show you briefly some stuff from work I've done myself previously. And this is, like, like I said, mock-ups. Trusting kind of the flat mock-ups people hand you can be a little rough. I like to say that, you know, mock-ups can be official and they can be useful. They can work for you. They can show when you don't have any other options. But if you look at a mock-up like this, that's a rough mock-up, guys. That's really flat. There's not a lot of life in this thing. Uh, am I showing the design? Yeah, I'm showing the design. It's not always the best mock-up. Using that automated mock-up and software, does it work? Sure. Maybe it shows sizing. It's more like that overall shot, but it's not showing you a lot more. Uh, creating one yourself and doing a little work to warp it better Still looks fake, not a lot of life, but it is better by far. We can talk about that again later as well. So virtual samples are interesting, but virtual samples only go so far. Whereas despite the fact that this is kind of a crumpled sample, and what I was really trying to show when I was selling this 
or showing this to people is how these were being sold as a set. I love the idea of bundles and sets. Bundle sets and correlated garment sets, uh, especially great also to take that out of this retail kind of club supporter sense that this is being done on uh, Instagram. I love to see this done commercially for uniform sets. I like to see people uh, making uniforms that their uh, employees want to wear. But this kind of setup is another thing that's interesting. I'm looking at this kind of rough mock-up. It's got one sample and a sticker. It's just on probably on a roll of paper for a backdrop. And at the same time, this rough piece, I think, looks better than my mock-ups that I did over there. The mock-ups are clearer. They have a better shot. This one doesn't have a detail shot. And what I think is the big miss on this piece when I'm looking at it, Instagram lets you put up multiple shots. Do this bundle shot and then give me a detail shot on each of one of those pieces and one texture shot of the embroidery. If you had done this in four or five shots, I think you would have a much more compelling story to tell. And then if you had this hat on a person who looks like your target market, more's the better. Now there's some social proof. Now people are thinking, I want to be that guy who's got the cool shark hat right? <laughs> I want the cool shark hat because I'm imagining in my mind right now the experience of showing my friends this awesome shark hat that they'll all dig and think that I have good taste, right? That's what we're talking about. We're selling something beyond the garment itself, and I think it's important. So anyway, I thought I'd show you guys that stuff too, and I think that's it's a fairly important thing to look at is how are we presenting this stuff and what does it mean to us in any case. So I think that's interesting. Like I said, can you do mock-ups? Absolutely. I've done mock-ups many times uh, on a standard piece like this. It can be okay. There's nothing wrong with using uh, the tools that are involved, but I do think this has a little less life. At least this is a nice clean mock-up. And once I'm inside of my store, great mock-up. But as you can see, do you see up at the top here? Now this is a mock-up store. It's not a real store. It was a store that I was using my designs in a store to kind of show the way this works. But um, but yes, I did draw the logo and do all the fun stuff because, hey, I like to design stuff too. What you will see, though, is that top hero banner image, my promotional image, is a detail shot. It's up close. You can't even tell what the garment is, but it's interesting. Just remember that you're trying to interest somebody and get them excited about what you might be selling before they have to get into the product. So there's that. The last thing I want to do is go over to an actual um, – we're talking about uh, retail, right? And I'll just tell you, this is super dry. This is superdry.com, uh, and superdry is pretty interesting. You know, it, they have a lot of really cool decoration. If you want to go doing some uh, retail research, and now that we can't go to stores, going to superdry and looking at all the products, you'll see some really cool, crazy treatments. But the way I handle this, first, you know, we can get, we can just go to, uh, just go to superdry. I'll just go and back up out of the search for a second. You can just see it. Certainly, their first stuff is just all action shots, right? Action shots, kind of aspirational. You're like, this is for young people who are cool, who are having fun together. I'm not saying this is what you'll do. This is what they did. This is their attitude. And you can even see that we have these, like the fake film borders. It's got a map behind it, Pacific Northwest up in the corner. Th these are intentional choices that they're making. These kind of, this fuzzed out background of the motel. This says that we are travelers. Hey, look at even the tattoo this guy has is a map tattoo with coordinates on it. We are cool people. We are traveling. We are road tripping. That's the experience we're selling to everybody, right? This is the experience we're selling. We're telling a story. And this story is important to how we sell. And we'll look. See, look at all this. Aspirational shots. However, look, flat shots as well. On the left-hand side, we've got a flat shot of a hoodie. This is an overall shot. It's interesting because it's got some texture in it. It's probably mocked up on that background. I don't believe that background's involved at all. That was probably shot on, on stage. But then we also have some aspirational shots, some action shots from people, right? But then I just did a search for embroidery. So this is just embroidery. This is just the stuff that has embroidery in the title or is done in embroidery. And what we can see, mostly action shots, right? Mostly action shots here. However, let's go ahead and look at this. This is a, they call it heritage embroidery. Pardon me for that scrolling there, folks. This piece is called a heritage, heritage embroidery shirt. It's got like a faux chain stitch on it. When we zoom in here, we're gonna see that we have a chain stitch. We have the ability to zoom and look at the piece. But here's our overall flat. We can see where the garment is. We can see the tag. There's no weird cutouts on it. We're gonna go ahead and we'll see a couple more action pieces. Here it is on a person. Here's the back of the piece. It's got a nice print on the back of it. Uh, you know, we're looking at it. Honestly, look at look at how little we're looking at the garment and the decoration here. This is aspirational. This is where we're trying to say we want to be like this person or we like the way this person looks. We want to look like them. 
And there's our detail. There's our texture shot. What did I tell you? Off angle. Makes me feel like I'm, it, I didn't even see this before I clicked in. So uh, I'm feeling like I should pat myself on the back today. Uh, off angle shot up close, tight, showing the texture of the embroidery. We can see that this is thick thread. We can see that they're looking for a vintage piece, right? They're doing that look. Then because we're talking about the garment, we got some detail shots on the garment as well. The garment has details, custom taping. And because we're talking about a brand, they even show you the tag and we have a nice custom woven tag that will never matter to anybody but you when you see it, right? So that's some cool stuff. We can say that's all of our cool zoom in stuff. The other thing you'll see with this piece is that we have video. And when we click on the video, I'm not saying we're gonna do video, but if you did a line, if you're doing something where you're advertising your product, not a bad idea to have some moving images. It captures people and it shows people how things are, especially if you are doing a line. If you're doing a small curated line of garments that you know what the decoration is going to be, video is not a bad idea. It's easier to do these days and people have the bandwidth to hold it. So stuff to think about, folks. I'm going to go ahead and pop out of here. I think we're going to do more of this topic. I think it makes sense. It's a good idea. Uh, I like the idea of talking about some of the stuff we had before to discuss. But let's kind of review a little bit of what we talked about today, right? First thing is to understand who we're selling to and what we're selling, right? Most people will talk about that as, you know, this pre-decorated versus custom order is the first thing we discussed because it helps you to isolate what kind of site you want to run. Uh, if you're going to do something pre-decorated where it's a curated set of garments, you can do a more retail styled look certainly. And because you're doing pre-decorated garments, um, you can take your own pictures, you can do samples very easily and it's not a huge cost to do so. And we can use traditional store sites. You can use WooCommerce, you can use uh, Shopify, you can use anything that is for standard garments or apparel or any other kind of accessory because all we have to do is be able to have our uh, a few things on a matrix, maybe size and color and if we have any other variation of the decoration, but those variations are preset. We're not going to be uploading anything, we're not going to be adding to them. Whereas we have the custom order site, if we're talking about a custom site that is all about you're going to get any kind of decoration you want, you can either do that in an informational way or you can do something with online design or at least uploading uh, uploading art so you can get quotes. When we're doing that, I still think, think about those retail styles for your samples. Show some sample work. And by the way, we didn't get to talk about writing copy at all. One of the things I do wanna call out no matter what we get to today is this, nobody necessarily cares how many heads of embroidery you have, uh, all of the kind of technical stuff we talk about, I remember this, where we used to say, on all the websites said, how many heads of embroidery we have? And talk about turnaround times. Yes, we can talk about turnaround times, but saying you have, we have the best quality. Okay, I wanna see it. I wanna know what you're doing. And I think we want something more unique because the truth of the matter is having decent quality and being able to deliver on time is the price of entry. What's original and interesting about you. Think about that when you're writing your copy, but definitely think about retail styling and the kind of pictures we talked about uh, when you're showing your sample work. I think that's important. And what I'm actually going to say is this, when we're talking about pre-decorated versus custom order, I'm going to actually term it this way. Service versus store. Are we selling items pre-decorated that we've made the choices about, or are we selling ourselves as a print and embroidery service? different kind of look. And we need to think about that when we're setting up our websites and when we're talking about what kind of pictures we need, what kind of assets we need, and whether or not we should be using things like mock-ups. Uh, when you're selling a service, much more uh, readily available to do mock-ups. Uh, that's totally fine to do, to use the stuff that are in templating systems, to use uh, stores that are made specifically for decoration. Very good when you're using it as a service. I would absolutely suggest that because they're built for decorators, those kinds of template systems and uh, software as a service. But when we're doing pre-decorated stuff, we can totally go the store route. And remember, especially if you have a store that has multiple accounts where you're allowed to have multiple storefronts, isolating and branding for one target market for a line is a great idea. And I would say even in the company space, I used to write individual company stores instead of having them all go to the one branded store because they felt more comfortable and they would buy more when it was decorated and had copy that related to their specific segment, their specific company. Other thing we talked about, selling the sizzle. Uh, I don't love the word selling the sizzle, but we are going to talk about selling experience. And you, what you really have to do is, uh, you know, know your draw. What are you drawing? How are you getting people involved? And in my opinion, instead of selling a sizzle, we think about it this way. 
What are we doing that's inspirational, inspires people to want to have this item to do something with it? Aspirational makes them want to be like the person who's wearing the garment, uh, to be in the situation that's being shown there, or functional. What function does this garment or decoration add to their life? What function does it have that makes their life easier, that makes something better for them? Uh, we should think about identification that you are identifying with a group, identifying with a cause. And the other option is that things are purpose motivated. This can also be, as we've seen with the condition we're currently in, um, the here for good movement where people were buying things that had uh, decorations from local businesses because they wanted to save the local business. Make sure we're calling that out in that case and showing things that relate us and identify us with the local business, with the local area. Also, when we are making images, what are we talking about again? First thing, we want to show our work. Make sure we're actually showing the kind of work we want to do, not just any work, showing good work we want to do that makes sense, that instills trust in our client. We want to show it in the thread, especially, hey, stock design people, digitizers, don't just show your digitals, show the real thing. The digitals look worse, honestly. And if you can't make a sample look good in the thread, go back to the drawing board, work harder on your technique before you sell anything, uh, or at least before you sell the thing that you were trying to sell in the digital because it looked cleaner. Uh, go ahead and sell that stuff in the thread. And I think this is actually useful. If you take anything out of this, probably this is the category. Uh, the three types of shots that I think are super important for embroidered apparel, embroidered items are the overall shot where we see the garment and the placement and we get an idea of what the garment is. Detail shots where we have a close but complete shot of the decoration or of any particular details on the garment that are important. And the texture shot where we get that money, awesome look at the embroidery, the thing that makes it valuable, the texture, the shine, the dimension. Love to see those as those low off angle, lit from a source that's off to the side. These are great shots to show what embroidery is and to show the quality of it so that we can see it's not mock embroidery, it's not just an image, this is real thread, this has that value. So. With that, let's go ahead and go to the comments for one last little comment here. And so let's jump in and see what's going on. Before we get out of here, I'd love to say goodbye to you guys in the right way. So I'd see who else is staying and stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> just back, working with a client, came back to Eric saying, the sizzle, my site has no sizzle. I need a sizzle maker. You know what? You can have sizzle. You have nice samples. Think about those kind of pictures I just said. Take some of those shots and put them up there. Trust me, you can take a million of them. Because if it's digital, you're not wasting film like we might have done many, many, many years ago before my time. Because we're not doing that, you can take as many as you want until you get it right. Uh, get some lighting. Most modern camera phones have cameras that are well enough for the resolutions you need online. Trust me. And yep, help selling your embroidery products. Absolutely. And uh, Brian says, and about the stuff on the SuperDry website, uh, in other words, subliminal advertising, yeah, they show things in those images to make you want to think about the context that they're in to aspire to be in that story. So I think that's interesting stuff too. You don't have to go that far, but you can. It's something you can use for sure. Uh, Daryl says, this is a good idea. Love that stuff. Uh, <laughs> selling at times is the missed piece. Yeah, no shoot. For sure. Uh, no problem. Shoot. I've seen it all the time. People will go through making themselves these awesome pieces and not actually put them forward, not sell them, not push them, not put them in front of people, not show their work, and they need to do that. So yeah, uh, we have excellent decorators. Nothing happens till something is sold. There's no dirty word here. When people talk about sales and they say it's a dirty word, think about this. If you, you everybody has that image of the used car salesman, the reason you say that is because you don't want someone to have to be sold a lemon. You don't want to be someone pushing something you don't trust. If your work is good and you trust it and you like it and you think you're doing the right thing, there's nothing wrong with selling because you are offering to someone a valuable commodity or a valuable item that shouldn't be a commodity. Uh, there's something valuable that you trust, that you believe in, that you think will help them. And you're offering it to them at a price that is reasonable, that has the value and respects the work you put into it and the creativity that you put into it. That's not a problem. We're recommending something to our friends we think they would benefit from and asking them to respect us by giving us an exchange of money for the item. Nothing is wrong with that. Sales is fine. So yeah, that's how it goes, folks. Uh, nothing happens to get sold. And I like this one too. Uh, don't forget your work can be displayed over stock images. You can get from places like pond5.com. Absolutely. They have video and audio files too. Uh, you don't have to come up with everything yourself making the images interesting. If you looked at that piece from Superdry, I would very much wager that the... Um, 
the super dry image that was showing the background that was a wooden texture, a wooden wall, they probably really did hang the hanger on some rope. I don't know if they were photoshopping that in, but you really could. But you could hang something over a background you can cut out easily and drop in a wooden texture or a scene or the sand on the beach with a shadow behind it. And that doesn't look fake the way that, say, a digital preview sometimes looks fake. So totally a good idea. So thank you, Brian, for uh, bringing in that comment. Something great. Uh, and yeah, super dry is a good example. Yeah, super dry knows how, what they're doing. So superdry.com, I'm not, I'm not advertising for them, never bought anything from them, but they've got some interesting stuff to see. And also when we were talking about multimedia last week, super dry is a good one to look at for multimedia for sure. So uh, Donna says, this has me really excited for my weekend of writing content for the fabrication side of the embroidery side. Thank you. What I will say is we're going to come back and talk copy later. Um, people who don't know, my primary degree, though it is uh, with a focus in medieval studies, was in English. I do a lot of writing and I enjoy it. And I think communicating is a big deal. So writing copy is interesting. What I will say is this. If we take one copy tip, we'll expand on later. Don't just copy the description from the catalog and throw it on your site if you're making your own setup. If it's not something you're uploading, absolutely. Don't just grab that copy and put it on there. Number one, it now is registering as a duplicate. So when Google crawls that site, your text is the same as the text on another site and yours is probably not the first one to have it, not the canonical sample. Um, now that text is a copy of some other text, less, less uh, search engine juju there. And a lot of the copy you get, like when you're in, in say San Martin, I'm not gonna pick on them, any of them. If you're in any of the uh, garment provider stuff, they're going to give you details that are important for us, right? We wanna know what kind of fabric that is. We wanna know some things about it. We might use technical terms to talk about the placket or the button setup or how things are, but the customer might not care about that. These customers, customers these days do a lot of research. So fabric types, uh, what kind of decoration it is. Those things are fairly important. You might want to have those on there. But I know when I used to make stores, the first thing I did was jump in and say, what was I using that garment for? Who was wearing it? Uh, what kind of scene did I want to paint? What story did I want to tell about the garment so that someone would know what they wanted to do with it? If I had a piece of performance wear, I didn't just say moisture wicking performance wear. I said, awesome for people who are living at the gym, Keep sweat from, you know, keep sweat off your skin and gives you that fresh feeling while you are running back and forth between tasks through your day. You paint a picture. So that was a bad example. <laughs> like Brian said, I'm running on coffee and a couple hours of sleep. However, even that, even the stuttering, halting version of that is a little bit better than 100% polyester, moisture wicking technology. Bullet points don't tell a story that way. So really a good idea, guys. Really good idea. So, and I'll go to the last couple of comments before we get going here. Jeff says, I loved it. Look forward to part two. Yeah, you're going to have to. I don't know if we're doing it next week, but uh, I think there's going to be a part two. And like I always say, guys, comment on this. Contact me directly via social media. Jump on my website and contact me. The form should be working again. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who know and didn't and heard that earlier on in the show, uh, Tell me what you want to see on the take up and ask me questions because a lot of what we do, uh, a lot of what I do and what we do here is answer questions that people are talking about. I want to take the temperature of what's going on every week and bring you a sampling of the kind of things that I tell people who ask me, what am I supposed to do with this particular thing? And, and this week has been a lot of e-commerce. So it's something good there. And uh, I'll say, you know, I really am looking forward to part two also. <laughs> Though, Justin, don't feel bad. Justin, our mentor, digitizer himself says, uh, Eric just shamed me into working on my site this weekend. I have a few digital samples I need to get rid of. You know what, man? Don't feel bad. I've got some myself. Everybody has that kind of stuff where we have done those samples. We've done those pieces. But I'll say you do good work, man. And I'm seeing good work on your social media. Here's the last thing I'll leave you with. We all love social media. It's great. It's immediate. It offers us those, the ability to do all that instant uploading. However, don't let all your content live on social media where it disappears if someone changes the algorithm. Bring that content back to your website, have blog posts, have a gallery, share it there too. Make sure it comes back into a place you can control. So Justin, yeah, man, you're showing awesome stuff on Instagram. There is no reason those pictures shouldn't be on your site. Get that on your site where you have control. All right, guys, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and end this take up and <laughs> As Brian says, I don't think bonus time really starts to do an hour and a quarter in the take-up. You know what? 
Uh, I will try to back up my bonus time. Once again, I really want to get this into more platforms so people can see it. I've got people on Instagram who are asking me where I am. Love to see those on Instagram TV, but that means I got to get it down to an hour, folks. So there may be some edits and some sound bites and some other stuff. Uh, Brian and I are both uh, probably going to talk to some uh, video wizards soon because we got some content stuff we want to do. So uh, certainly I'll be thinking about that as we go on. Doesn't mean we won't do deep dives, but it might mean uh, extra little bits and extra little episodes. And I thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for engaging in the comments. Thank you for asking questions. And thank you for joining me live. It has been awesome. And I cannot wait until next week.